going off topic off topic you really off topic right yo you way off topic. how is it that everybody's over here and you way over there off topic the other ones i guess all right well hold on we officially we are here <laughs> All right, what up, family? Welcome to another episode of Going Off Topic with Brother Omawale. And we are back with a very uh, special guest. I have my sister Juju Locks uh, in the building, a fan favorite here on the show. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, you know, you you were actually our, our maiden voyage, right? The first, I guess, like the pilot episode that we did, you were the first person that we ever did this like going off topic like interview situation with and it was all audio but now we got a little format going i mean we got a little, <laughs> budget, we got a little budget over here so it's something to pop <laughs> for me a little bit so it's good to have you back thank you thank you thank you so much all right so how have you been miss juju i've been good you know uh living life living life getting the rough of it but i'm here <laughs> has, has has life been good oh man it's been fair. Okay. I think it's been fair. You know, what can you say? All right. All right. So yeah. let's, let's, <laughs> let's get you, let's get you a proper introduction uh, right. to the audience. Cause the first time you were here, you were not on camera. So now in the audience, right. gets to see you live and in the flesh. So <laughs> well, typically what I like to do in these conversations is I like to spend the first part of the conversation to get a little, to get to know a little bit about my guests, right? Introduce you to my audience properly. So I just, I'll start off by who is Juju Locks? And how'd you even come up with that name? Like, let's start there. Oh, that's funny. Okay. So I got that name because um, I do date online. So I don't want people to know my real name. So I just kind of, Juju is um, what Africans like to call like witchcraft, you mm -hmm. know? So they'll say, oh, you do that Juju. So I felt like, oh, I'm magical as fuck. Why not just nickname myself Juju? I had other nicknames too, but they never really stuck. So Got you, got you, got yeah. you. So this this is probably not an appropriate or, or question to <laughs> ask a lady, but I do recall from our first interview uh, we talked a little bit about what it's like dating and your look at your face. You think I'm going to ask something crazy. I'm not <laughs> nothing crazy, nothing crazy. You, but no, I, I recall we spoke something about um, dating in your thirties, right? Yeah. You, you, I don't know if you were 30. Or so how, how old is Juju locks at the moment? I'm 31. I just turned 31 in December. Right, I don't um, feel it though. I think that's the key. You know, you have to, you got to act how you feel, if that makes sense. So I feel like I'm 20 years old. I don't feel like I'm 31. Got you. Got you. So, <laughs> so you you grew up like dating, like in, in the online area era, right? Because I guess my, my space was like the early. Yeah. Oh, my space. 2000s. I don't know if it, then you get Facebook, Instagram and <laughs> like Twitter. Like when, OK, when I was on my space, I was in like. Middle school, high school. I was in high school. Gotcha. So I never really got to date on MySpace. Facebook, I met my child's father off Facebook, which okay. is interesting enough. Um, I did, I tried, I tried so many little social media things to date, dating sites. Oof. Yeah, I have had my fair share. <laughs> See, yeah, I'm I'm a tad bit older than you. I think I got you by like seven years. So you you oh, are I, you. <laughs> Dang. You, you, you weren't around for the Black Planet days. <laughs> I was. I wasn't Where supposed to be up there. Uh-oh. Right. I was too young, but <laughs> yes, I definitely got um, a picture of, oh, I don't even remember who she was, but she was so gorgeous, this dark-skinned woman. And I got her as my Abby because I yeah. wasn't allowed to take pictures yeah. and put it on the internet. And that's when we had dial-up and all of that stuff. Oh, got man. You, got you. How, how, oh, long how, how long have you had your locks? Just out of curiosity. Okay, so I'm going to be transparent here. I've had my locks for about two and a half years. This, from from here up, are mine. Gotcha. And then these, this little bit here is extensions. Yeah, if you wouldn't have yeah. told me that, I promise you, I <laughs> never would have known. And like People I'm ask me, and I don't want to lie, but then I'm like, why the hell are you asking? But 
I'm just gonna be honest. Yeah, I didn't like the short lock look. I'm like, because when I first started, I think my locks were like here. Yeah. I was like, nah, it's too short for me. So now that they're here, I could cut the extensions out, but yeah, I'm just gonna I, wait till my hair gets this long and then. I promise the you, I never <laughs> ever. And I'm like, I'm like, I'm like a lock aficionado you know really yeah definitely definitely it's a i fooled you okay yeah you definitely did you i know. did them myself too yeah you, oh nice nice so y'all need to tap in oh, <laughs> this is just, this is just <laughs> it's, it's crazy over here hold on a second let me get some mm -hmm. water and some coffee hold on one second all right so i'm gonna move off the locks that was that was my my ancestors telling me to move off of the lock oh, <laughs> <laughs> play with black women's hair, you know. Let's yeah. let's, let's move in. <laughs> nothing, nothing but respect for black women and their hair, right? So, yes, yes. all right. <clears throat> so, Juju locks. I'm. I really, I really want to delve a little bit deeper in this in this conversation, right? So, mm -hmm. thirty one year old woman. Um, the I know the content that you create, uh, right now is around you know your dating life. But before we get there, I want to know just a little bit about who you are as a person like if you, your closest girlfriend that you've had for more than 10 years what are three things she's going to tell us about juju locks that the world would be surprised to know oh I'm, I'm gonna say some good and bad things then since we're being honest um i'm kind of bratty okay. <clears throat> i have a really i'm working on my attitude problem but i'm very sweet you know very giving honest brutally honest and wow, I love, just feel like I'm on a dating site or something. I love to travel, you know, <laughs> uh, I love to cook. I like African and Caribbean um, cultures. Man, like, yeah, I love the beach, stuff like are you, that. Are you vegan? Yes. Okay. All right. How long? Yes, how I've been long? vegan for woo, like seven years. Okay. Yeah. I, I don't know. This might this might be like one of those dating profiles. You never <laughs> know. Like your your DMs might be full. You know. At, I at, you know. Hmm, I I don't know. Maybe could they could happen. Anything could happen. Okay. So tell Anything tell me tell me about this this bratty personality because I find that I find that hard to believe. Like, you know, I did too. Because I'm like I'm just kind of you know kind of perfect, but nah. Um, <laughs> Guys would literally tell me, like, yo, you know, you're kind of bratty. And I'm like, what? So I actually looked into that. Like, what does that even mean? And mm -hmm. yeah, a little bit. Just when I kind of can't get my, my way on things. Not oh. like childish, but kind of like bratty. Kind of irritating when I can't get my way. I'm oh. working on it. <laughs> okay, so... All right, so. Let, like what what flavor of bratty is it like bratty like i'm attention seeking or bratty Ooh. like i'm ma manipulating a little like what what's the flavor oh god that both of those sound bad um well you said you're brutally <laughs> honest, so I'm, you know I'm, I'm just trying to i'm trying to get the you're real right thing. okay oh man if i had to choose one of those oh i would have to say emotionally manipulative Wow. If that makes sense. Okay. But attention? No, I'm not an attention seeker. I know men need their time. I need my time away from a man. Personal time. I date men with kids. So I I, ha I can't be an attention seeking person. But yeah, oh. okay. 100%. Like, I'll make you kind of feel bad. Like, you're not spending time with me. We can't text. Like, yeah. 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 A little bit of that. So you, my manipulation. So, so, so you, you, la you laid on heavy to get the quality time. Yeah, I feel like quality time is needed. Yeah, you know, but well, isn't 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 that like a like like a gift and a curse, right? Because yeah, if I I guess if the guy gives it to you, what you are being bratty about, like you probably wouldn't like that guy, or probably would lose would lose interest in that guy if he kind of like gives if he does it too much. Yeah, I feel like I'm stepping on him. Okay. Yeah. So sometimes I feel like women, not just me, I feel like some women do this where they like are trying to get something. But I feel like if you give it to them too often, they get turned off. Yeah. That makes sense. I, yeah. It's strange. Women are complicated. But it is that at least with me. And I'm like, dang, OK, I can get anything I want. It gets boring. There's no boundaries. There's no nothing. It's just like I get everything I want. It's kind of boring. 
Got you. Got you. So that sounds toxic. No, it, 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 <laughs> it sounds it sounds real. It's I think this is an opportunity to have like a real conversation because on going off topic, I never know what we're going to be discussing. Like mm. I don't prepare show notes. I just okay, who's going to be my guest? We're going to have All a right. conversation, right? So because that's what I was waiting on. I was like, what's the topic? What are we talking about? I was getting nervous, but I'm like, no, okay. No, it's 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 completely off topic. But I want to yeah. I want to talk right because. You said like if a guy bends too often, right? You know, we, we're talking about the, the woman's psychology here. It's going to be mm-hmm. seen as 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 weakness, like he's a pushover, and that's going to be seen as less attractive. So, uh, what do I want to do with this? Like, are are you looking for uh, like what type of challenge do you look for in a guy? And, and let me tell you why I'm asking the, the question, because I feel like you may feel like that you are in tune with your power as a woman. <laughs> and I feel like you, you probably think that you can get over pretty easily on the average guy. Is, yeah. that, is that an incorrect read or is that an accurate read? Okay. I feel like a lot of us, we do have these powers as women, you know, whether you want to use it to manipulate or whatever, but I feel like I use mine for good. I don't um try to get over on men or steal their money or use them or nothing like that. Mm-hmm. But just knowing the fact that you can do it is is rather easy, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so are are men really really easy like that? Like some of them, yes. It's actually quite scary how easy it is. It's like literally the taking candy from a baby type thing, a hundred percent. Wow. But um, the men that I attract, majority of the time, they don't play those types of games. Gotcha. Like they can see right through me. I had a podcast. I was talking about that today. And I said, men have like a power. They don't realize if you sit and you listen to a woman and allow her to talk long enough, she's going to jab up everything and just spill everything. And men can kind of just look right through us. Got you. Got yeah. you. So I guess as men, you, we have to get in tune. You just, we can't be out here. We're just getting manipulated. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't like the way that. But... I mean, cause men are visual creatures. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Women, they love a beautiful woman. Let's say she got a body too. And she's speaking nice and it's easy. Yeah. But there, there are lots of beautiful women out here. So yeah. is, are, are you, are, if a, a lot if of women you... are getting over every day. Yeah. Yeah, were you were you on our? Uh, we had a panel. The our, our hoes winning. We had that panel. Were you on that panel? I was on the uh, pick me's versus the skip me. I think that's what it was called. Okay, all right. Or so something like that. Yeah, I was on that one. Let me let me ask you that question because oh. we, we do exist in a culture where horrible standards are being promoted, mm-hmm. right? So, do you believe that uh, that because you said a lot of women are getting over. So do you believe that the the, the so-called the hoes are winning in this present environment? Oh, oh God. How can I? Okay. I feel like traditional women are still winning. These The pickneys, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like sometimes, a majority of the time, a man, if he just wants something in particular from a woman... I feel like a hoe is probably the best person to go to. <clears throat> You're not going to have to wine and dine, get to know them, and all of the stuff. So in that field, I do feel like the hoes are winning a little bit. Okay. All right. All right. I mean, there are marriages happening, and I'm I'm so happy for that. But it's like all these men out here, it's almost like they're scared of commitment. They don't really want to date. Uh like monogamous you know it's it's tough so i feel like if you are out here just kind of going with the flow not really putting up too much of a fight and you don't really want anything you just maybe want the dick yeah (laughs) i think i think the 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 other side of that right because you talked about a lot of the men uh, not being desirous of commitment or like monogamous relationships yeah i think it has created an environment where (laughs) <laughs> the relationships are very transactional and oh, i think yeah. that women are a bit better at putting a price on things than men so it's created an environment now where like the i don't know if you want to call it online prostitution or whatever you want to cuz I, I i saw you did a you did a discussion about uh uh, the creative way some of these young ladies are starting to offer their services, like come get a haircut and a you know, <laughs> thinking on the side. Like, do you recall that, that live that you did? I did a YouTube uh, video about that. Oh yeah. Um, <clears throat> it's not my thing. 
<clears throat> it's a bit it's a bit nasty to me. Um, yeah, I've seen women, uh, like you said, doing the haircut and they are naked while they're doing the haircut. And then they even offer the sexual services after, or now I did another podcast where women are just straight up, um, going in public, showing themselves, you know, yeah, and yeah. it's just kind of like a walking billboard now. Yeah. Yeah. Literally. I, I, <laughs> I got on. So first of all, I did a, I did a, an episode um, of the Race Manhood and Power podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was episode 12. It was called um, Black Women Have Been Infected with Horrible Culture, culture right? And horrible, right? To play on words. And <laughs> in there, I had mentioned, like, you know, back in 2017 and 2016, I started seeing, like, um, uh, young ladies referring to themselves as, like, cum demons and semen witches and stuff like that on Twitter. And this morning, literally, I logged on to Twitter and uh, somebody, I don't know who put it onto my timeline. No, it wasn't porn. If you put porn on my timeline, I automatically block you out. Right. Front, right. But it got retweeted onto my timeline. And the, the name of the account was literally Semen Demon. And under it, somebody was congratulating this young lady for hosting her first fellatio class. So it was like a class of all these black women. I saw and that. They were learning how to like give fellatio using mm. you know fake props or whatever. But whoever gave the best head was rewarded with like a trophy. And I'm looking, I'm like, this is a room <laughs> of young black women just on the internet, like learning. Like I'm like, like I, I, I don't even know what to say. But did, did, you, did you see that clip? Or I did see the clip, and then once I realized what I was watching, I was like, yeah, I'm good. Um, yeah. It's a trend of like how raunchy can you get, and yeah. then no, like all publicity is good publicity apparently. So, like I saw a woman at a uh, paint and sip, yeah, giving one of the strippers fellatio. Got you. And I'm like, but you're in front of people. People have their phone out. They're recording. Like people just don't care anymore. Um, yeah, I've heard of that term, semen demon. You know what I think it is. I think it's the women are trying to get attention from men any type of way they can. Yeah. And maybe brain wise is not getting it. Maybe you're not getting a lot of um, attention looks wise. So the next thing that a man would like is just sex. So yeah. I think that's going to get the man's attention. I guess that's what they think. I'm not sure. So how do you like as as a single woman, like I'm, I imagine you must feel pressure to be i guess competitive in this in this environment like what do what you thought not on that realm no yeah. <laughs> when it comes to showing what i can do sexually or like oh look at me look at my body like come pick me i'm not with all that yeah i, I have morals and values i just can't my father would be flipping in his grave i, I can't do that yeah so you don't you yeah. don't have the uh aisha curry thing going on where it's like you know I'm, I'm, oh no <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she was you know, she was frustrated because she's like, you know, all of the, you know, the, the thoughts are they get the attention, they get the double taps, they get the energy, mm -hmm. right? They get um, you know, men are pursuing and giving yes. resources and energy to those to those particular uh avatars. She's but, not wrong. I just feel like it was wrong for her to say that and you're in a whole marriage. Yeah. Like if I was to say that, nobody would look at me funny and be like, yo, I agree with her, but I'm single. Yeah. She's in a whole marriage. Why do you care who's getting attention and who is not giving you attention? You're a married woman. You shouldn't Agreed. care about those likes. Agree. That's an attention seeking issue. Got you. Got you. Maybe so, she's not happy within her marriage, but <clears throat> I know uh, 110%. Like, okay, I go out on vacation and I take bikini pictures. You know, things are time and a place for everything, right? Yeah. But me just flashing my, my ass and everything from my vagina you can see through to my throat i just feel like that's absurd like yeah. it's really no point in showing all of that you're gonna get attention but is it the attention you want yeah yeah, yeah. so so let me ask you this um because to be honest i have no idea what it's like to date in this environment <laughs> like i'm Sucks. I, you know i i really don't like so I, you know i try to be uh sympathetic to to the men you know who are who are out here because when they tell me it's, it's bad out here, you know, oh, yeah. I try to like, you know, to keep keep hope alive. You know what I mean? Like, but they like, no, nah, bro. Like, it's, 
it's it's horrible out here. And what's crazy is this was another again on Twitter today. I probably spent a little bit too much time on Twitter. Me too. Yeah, it's it's time for a break. Yeah. So there's a a clip of a sister who's like she looks like she's crying a little bit on the timeline, and she's like, you know, uh, dating over the age of thirty in LA is so hard, and making it past the 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 talking phase and like at this point i feel like i'm giving up and i'm having an existential crisis because i want to have children but i don't think that it's it's going to happen so let me ask you this as someone who is very public with your dating life you know the adventures of juju so to speak right yeah. <laughs> um is is marriage still like are you looking for a man that is going to want to seal the deal in that way like what what's the what's the goal the goal is always going to be marriage yeah 100 um i do feel like some people are they're frustrated you know mm -hmm. because i'm not lying it's tough out here men are trying to get what they can get before they feel like you're going to use them and get what they want from you if that makes sense so yeah these men, like you said, it's a transactional situation now. These men want to get sex or uh, get you a badge on their belt or whatever they want in that moment before you try to extort any money out of them, use yeah. them for dinner. They, men don't want to be played. And then a lot of women are out here doing podcasts and YouTube videos like me, and they're spilling the tea like, yo, we have a boyfriend for this, a boyfriend for that, a friend for this, and niggas are like, they're tired. They don't want to yeah. do it anymore. Yeah. So, I don't blame them, but it's just like, dang, I'm, it sucks because it's like the good girls and the good guys are getting hurt, you know? Yeah. So, 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 so where, where does that leave you? Because like, I, 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 I uh, saw a post that you put up. First of all, before I even go there, because I want to have that conversation, but there was a stretch where I was like, Juju is in a space every day oh yeah <laughs> like it, it's, so so have you have you burnt out on spaces or are you still going heavy a hundred percent burnt out <laughs> <laughs> like, i'm tired like, like literally every day it was like you it were was such a new feature and i feel like yo this is cool because these people you can tweet them but you never get to hear their voice or get to know their personality so then you find yourself in these spaces and you feel like you know the people. Yeah. And then you start realizing even through voice, you'll never really know somebody. And then yeah. maybe stuff falls, falls apart or tarnishes. And you're kind of like, okay. But I thought it was really good publicity. I was getting a lot of follows. Mm -hmm. I was getting a lot of DMs. And people were listening to my podcast. So I'm like, okay. I thought it was a way of getting yourself out there. But it was so draining that I just yeah. kind of like, yeah, you, I, had, I actually had a few people mention that to me. Like, I had people, like some brothers who I follow, like, yo, you should really consider come, you know, sharing your message on places right. like Clubhouse and Spaces because you'll get a lot of followers. People yes. will hear, they'll hear what you say and then they'll click on your profile. And, and, they'll, and I, I was like, I, I just don't have it. Like, it, it's not enough boundaries on Spaces <laughs> for me. And it's like, I just, I, you know, I, I have to, you know, you can only get small doses of me. I just can't be over accessible to every. Yeah. And I think that's what I did wrong. I was in these spaces, like you said, every day, feeling like I knew these people, kind of getting a rapport with these people. And it didn't, it turned, it was really the opposite direction. It's almost like you got more beef than anything else. Cause it's almost like it was a new way for people to hate on you or find reasons not to like you. And it yeah. was just like, damn, okay, this sucked. But I did get those followers. So I guess it's worth it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but you know, you've, it seems like you you've been on a bit of a hiatus, at least from Twitter. I know that you've been posting on your your vlog on YouTube. I see those come mm -hmm. like weekly now. At this point, you you, yeah. you give us a give us a vlog, but on Twitter, you've seemed to have. You know what? I'm going to start falling back a little bit. Oh yeah, you know, <clears throat> and I feel like people notice because I wasn't tweeting as much when I was in the spaces. Right. But then when I got away from the spaces and I wasn't tweeting, people were like, where are you at? Like, and I noticed my followers were going up and down, up and down. So I was like, damn, I guess I got to go and interact. I guess that's the whole thing of being a social media influencer or trying to put yeah. content out. You got to keep your face out there. But I mean, I love my followers, you know, or people that 
help me out. And especially my listeners on the podcast, they're loyal. Like yeah. my YouTube ain't out there yet like that, but the podcast, they're loyal. So I appreciate them. But, you know, I try to open up enough to let people know what's going on. Yeah. And they, they understand. But me, yeah, I had me, to take a break. It was just too you, much. ask you this question. Yeah. From, from your podcast listening audience. How, how many of the men are taking shots to, you know, I want none. Hey, Juju, I want to be more than a listener. None. It's impressive. <laughs> what? <laughs> none. You know what I think it is, though? Um, I hate to say, oh, maybe I'm intimidating. I don't think it's that. I think men are respectful. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's respectful because I don't come off like very... Oh, I don't need me, man. Da, 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 da. I have this job. This I don't come off like that. Yeah. I just think they respect my my space because on my podcast you can go and message me and stuff. Yeah. They send videos like on not, not videos but voice notes. I'm so happy you did this. Or do you have any advice? And I hit them up and I talk to them, but nope. Mm -mm. Uh, and I think maybe they might be scared to end up on a podcast episode. <laughs> Got you. Yeah, like I'm not. I'm not about to take that risk. I get it. That's, yeah, that's I'm thinking that now. Like, okay. <laughs> like, nah, I'm. I'm really not trying to be content for her next episode. So. Yeah, because everybody's gonna be content. If it, if, especially if you fuck up, yeah. people love a good drama filled episode. So. Got you. Yeah. Got yeah. you. So, fellas, <laughs> what I would what I would say is uh, if you're going to go on a date with Juju, you got to get her to sign an NDA. <laughs> yeah, that's probably, yeah, that's probably it. That's probably a good idea. You know, or you could just tell me, because listen, if you tell me, I'm not going to, I'm not going to spill nothing. Yeah. People have told me before, oh, you don't put it in your podcast. I'm like, not if you don't want to be. Yeah. But um, I don't know. Like my life is, it's interesting. People think I'm making it up because it's so wild, but yeah. this is, What's what, what, what's what's the wildest story you've ever shared on your on your podcast? Because you're eight seasons in at this point. Oh my god, that's a hard question. Uh I have so many. <laughs> I couldn't even pick. I have a lot of bad dates. Yeah. I have a lot of bad, and I won't even say if I go on ten dates, I think maybe five of them are gonna be bad. Okay. Well, let me, let me ask the question a different way. What is your most viewed? episode like which episode of yours has the most engagement oh man i think one of them just off the top of my head because i know there's more but my brain is like um when i went to turks and caicos with this guy mm -hmm. <sighs> oh my god and he was basically asking me for sex and i'm like i feel like it should happen naturally yeah you know like yeah. whining and dining we're in a beautiful island like Let's yeah. make it naturally happen. And he would just ask me and he was just like, um, it's Mr. Nasty time. Like, come on, let's have some sex. And I said, Mr. Nasty time. He was like, yeah. And I was like screaming on the inside because I'm like, no, this guy did not pull out what is it, like a Friday after next freaking quote to have sex with me. Yeah. Yeah. They that ate that up on weird. Twitter. I said, oh, my God. <laughs> how, well, how, how, how old was this guy? <laughs> Cause that, cause that is that's Uncle. Uh, what, what was his yes. name? Uncle. Uh, I forget. I can't remember his name. Uh, but yes, he's he was like a year older than me. So at that time, he was like 30, 31. Interesting. It was so the secondhand embarrassment, and people were quoting me. It's Mister Nasty Time for like a week, and I'm like, damn, yeah, it happened. Yeah, well, but it was just sick. I'm like, damn. Was, yeah. was, he, was he a listener? To the podcast. I mean, I don't care if okay. he was. I don't think he was. Oh, that's cold blooded. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. Once I get to a point, it's just gonna come out. I don't really care if you listen or not. I mean, yeah. if you're a subscriber, thank you, but I don't care. So, so let me ask: is 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 dating traumatic? And if so, <laughs> is is the podcast therapeutic? Like, what, what's happening here? Both. So I go through all of this weird stuff. Sometimes it's funny. Sometimes it really like makes me think like, whoa, should I just stop this online stuff? But then I get to spill stuff on Twitter and the podcast and YouTube. And it just kind of balances itself out. Yeah. I get to vent and people say, hey, I went through the same thing. Or, you know, they write me private DMs. And I'm like, okay, I'm not the only one out here struggling. Yeah. So it is cool. But it's weird because it's like, Dean, you kind of 
you gotta go through all of this stuff just to have really good material. It sucks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's trash. So, so l- l- let me ask you a question, just just out of curiosity. Um, mm-hmm. Like a a lady who is single and is you know looking to be courted or you know to you know to date to lead to something else you know hopefully something more long term how how do you signal that you are available and that's the first part of the question and then the second second part is like where does a lady go to uh i don't know attract or meet men besides the internet like because I, i feel like clubbing was in like our early 20s yeah and clubbing i don't think we were looking for anything serious at that time but now like where do you get, like do you like go to the supermarket like what, like what, what do you do? do you <laughs> I like go to the supermarket with my kids, so okay. no. And then I do a lot of uh, online, and then go pick up my order. So I never even leave my car for real. Yeah. Um, I would have to say mingle with people that know these other people. So mm-hmm. like on Sunday, I'm going to a Super Bowl party. Okay. There's going to be a lot of men there. You know what I'm saying? I, yeah. I hate sports, but I'm gonna yeah. go to mingle. Yeah. Yeah. You know, gotcha. and I feel like to show that you're available, you got to be kind of open. And I know some people feel like, oh, I am open, but your demeanor is rough. Yeah. <laughs> like you have this rude, mean look on your face like you had a bad day. You might not be as cute as you would be if you tried. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. look open and presentable. Let me, all right. Let me ask you another question. <laughs> you, you are not going to be the only single uh, woman. Of course not. At this does does Juju play nice with other women? Yes. Okay. Um, especially when I drink a little bit. I love the little, you know, sisterly bonds. I'll talk mm-hmm. to the sisters. I don't care. Yeah. Okay. Because my thing is, if it's meant for me, you couldn't take it away. Got you. Yeah. Got you. What's There's for- no reason to fight over over dick. Like, it's so much out here. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> Got you. Nope. Got you. That's, that is an interesting take. Fellas, I'm... Yeah. We gotta make things a little bit more difficult, fam. Like, we, no, we, we just can't, we can't be out here just like continue to be easy, please. No, no. Listen, no I, I'm gonna have to start hosting uh, classes or something. Uh, like, we, 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 we gotta no. make things a bit more uh, uh, challenging, like fam. What? Like, they gotta they gotta work. Like, what's going on? Uh, I saw I saw somebody posted on on Instagram, right? Because I, I started using Instagram in 2021. Mm. Um, so that, <laughs> I, w- I was just a, like, I I couldn't do Facebook because like, first of all, corporate America, everybody like stalks, yes. stalks you. So I got off of Facebook like in the early 2000s, like I'm yes. not going to do that. Um, so I, I had been doing Twitter f- since like 2016. So I was like, Ooh, I'm those were the, that was a good year. Yes. That I'm was never going to do more than one social media platform. But yes. I, I, came, I came up with Instagram in 2021. So I see some interesting things happening uh on instagram but i saw a post the other day where it was like um you know we got to start taking ourselves more seriously right so um if she ain't got no job she don't get no dick if she don't have like it, it was like a whole <laughs> list of things that if a woman doesn't have <laughs> then she yeah. is not is not deserving oh she had to take a drink on that one hold on <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> She, she she is not uh, worthy of of our attention. So let me ask you this: from a woman's perspective, what are the things that you require of a man for him to be worthy of your attention? First of all, I agree with that. I've said that on a podcast that why are you sitting here giving one women your your sperm, your penis, whatever time and affection if she don't have the bare minimum stuff? So I agree yeah. with that. Um, <sighs> What qualifies a guy for me to give him time? To be worthy of your attention, right? Yeah. Um, just be nice. You know what I'm saying? Of course, relationships, like just talking to me, you just have to be nice, good hearted mm-hmm. person. But if we're talking about relationships, of course I have qualifications where I, of course I want you to have some type of plan for your life. I want you to be able to provide. If you have children, which I prefer for my men to have children, then I want you to be an active father in their lives, you know? Very simple things like that. Just be a good-hearted person. Everything else, they're like add-ons to me. Let me, let me ask you a question. Mm-hmm. Is your preference that your a potential mate has children of his own because you don't want to have any more children? Correct. <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> now, listen. Hold on before all my DMs get dried up. Now, listen. 
if I get married, right, yeah, yeah, and this man is a wonderful man, which I'm pretty sure he will be, I'm, I can give him one of our own, but yeah. uh, I don't want a football team. That's just my thing. I just don't want a football team. Yeah, because that comes with responsibility. You know, a lot more stretch marks and <laughs> a lot more time. That's a good thing. Yeah, that's the stretch marks are, are a good thing. Oh yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, and, and not all of us jump back. Like I, yeah. after my son, I barely got back. So I, mm-hmm. I'm gonna need that that marriage to be solid, so yeah. I can go to the gym and he's gonna help me out. And I just don't want to be the single mom again. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, that makes makes perfect yeah. sense. So let, let me ask you this. I I saw a post that you put on Twitter, and I wish I would have went and found it before. <laughs> I <was today. laughs> this, this was about, I think it was like two weeks ago. Mm. And you pretty much just made this announcement like, you know what, F it. I'm just going to go ahead and be the bad guy. Oh, yeah. And I, like, I, I wish I had it in context, but like, do you know the post that I'm talking about? 100%. Okay. What, so what, <laughs> what drove you to, to kind of like reach that conclusion? Hmm. You know what it was? It's the fact that. And let me let me before you say that I'm I'm literally looking at your bio right now, <laughs> and in your bio it says, "Welcome to hell." Mercury mixed with brimstone and sulfur. Uh, location is in Hades. Yes. So I, I I don't know what's happening with the energy right now, but <laughs> please do explain. Like help help me okay. understand what's going on. I'm a Sagittarius, right? Mm-hmm. And that element will be fire. And then on top of that. I've always been seen as the black sheep and the villain. Like no matter if somebody starts something with me first and I just, even if I don't react in a nasty way, people are always looking at to me like, so what did you do? And I'm like, bro, it wasn't me. So it just, a few things happened where I was trying to be very sweet, trying to change my ways and all this other stuff. And I'm just like, it's not fucking working. <laughs> no. And I'm like, dang, if it's so hard to try to change this, and I don't feel like there's anything wrong with it. Why not just continue to just be me 100 percent, you know, and it was just a certain certain situations where I was like, you know, this isn't working with this person. Mm-hmm. So I was like, fuck it. I'm just going to go ahead and be the demon and villain. that Everybody thinks I am. Not and honestly, being demon. the villain is very fun. I'm not going to lie. I was going to say not not a semen demon. No. Okay, right. <laughs> no. Hey, please. You don't just go. The, just the person that, like I said, I'm very blunt. Yeah. And. If something happens in a room and everybody's like scared to say that thing, I'm just gonna go ahead and out and say it. Okay. I'm just kind of tired of holding myself back. It's just not me. So. Okay. So yeah. let, uh, let's 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 have this conversation, Juju. Uh-huh. Are you ready? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 So I, I had a young sister on a recent episode, and she was explaining to me right that. She feels as though she is not ready for the type of man that she wants, right? There are aspects of herself that she needs to change. She feels like she could be more feminine. Mm -hmm. And like when my response to her was, my response was that kind of like you are who you are, you know, like your personality and your personhood is what it is. So if it's not, I think that we have to be able to, differentiate between the toxic components of our person versus who we are Uh as as a person and if you try to cut pieces of who you are off in order to fit into a box it's never going to work so my question to you is do you feel like you were attempting to fit yourself into a box to make other people happy and if so what was that box that you were attempting to fit into um, I don't, um, I, I can see me trying to f- put myself into a box to fit into a certain group or to be seen as not dominant. So mm-hmm. I felt like if I was nicer online and getting stepped on a little bit online, then people would see that I was a little bit more passive and not dominant, which would to them equal masculine. But then I started to realize like, With the man that I'm with, I'm super submissive Mm -hmm. and I'm super feminine. So who gives a fuck about the online stuff? You Mm -hmm. know, like, I don't really care about that. That was my issue. But I feel like if you being feminine is a problem in your relationship, 
then or in your, your you know you have a problem with it yourself then 100 percent fix that i think so yeah i mean i had those issues in my early 20s and yeah. i was like i can't do this i need to be more feminine so it's more soft so. Ex explain to me um how you define uh dominant is dominance like just a from a woman's perspective, mm -hmm. is it like, is it a strong, is it like, a, is it just, is it a fiery energy or is it an assertive energy? Like, what is it about you that you feel? Because I, I think before I talk, we talked before, I said there's a difference between like being combative, you know what I mean? Versus like, the, I think there's different expressions of energy. So when you mm -hmm. see dominant, like, what are you referring to? Oh, trying to take the reins of everything, not needing any help not admitting when you do need help, just trying to take control of everything. And I feel like nobody wants to be around somebody that feels like they're never wrong or don't need any help. Yeah. If that makes sense. Okay. Okay. So when I initially asked you the question about kind of like the welcome to hell and mercury and the yes. you know, mix fire with brimstone, which is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> this is hilarious. So, um, when I asked you that, you said you were just tired of trying to be something that you were not. Yeah, people. Okay, I was a part of a group. I don't like. I don't want to give them any type of publicity or anything, yeah. so I'm not gonna mm -hmm. mention their name. Mm -hmm. And people were saying you can't act how you act, which is very fiery. Um, and I feel like it differs because if I was Latin or Spanish or in this fiery, it would be attractive, right? Yeah. But since I'm black and I'm fiery. Um, they feel like it's dominant or um, masculine, right? Yeah. So they kept the men in these groups kept saying this stuff to me. So I'm like, okay, I need to change. But then I started to think about it. And I'm like, change. Some change is good. Don't get me wrong. And I did experience a lot of growth from the situations. But I felt like I'm losing who I am, just to seem soft and supple for people online that I don't even find attractive. Yeah. I was like, absolutely not. These men that I'm dating, when I'm in their presence, I'm soft and I'm supple and I'm submissive. So why do I have to prove to that, prove that to online to people that I don't even know? Yeah. And that's why I was kind of like, listen, I'm gonna continue to be the fire starter online. Yeah. <laughs> and speak my piece on stuff. And I feel like that's why I was losing some of my followers because yes, I was still being me but I wasn't being the full me, if that makes sense. So yeah. they were kind of seeing that and they were like, well, the reason I followed you is because, you know, you give it to us straight, but lately you've been kind of soft. And I'm like, I can't really win. So I'm like, I might as well do what I want and yeah. what I feel like is right. So <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. So, so let me ask you this is the, um, cause, uh, the sister who I had on was a young sister who I love, I really love her content. Um, mm. Uh, but she has very strong energy as well. Uh, yes. Her name is uh, Sister Sister ZZ, and she was telling me that her um, her YouTube uh, presentation is like it's like a, it's like a personality, right? You know how like Beyonce um, back in the day she had this documentary called like Sasha Fierce, like yes. Sasha Fierce was who Beyonce was when she uh -huh. was on stage, right? Right. So let me ask you: is is like the submissive goddess? Is that like a stage personality, or is, is it like an alter? Ego, because in our first conversation, you told me that that dominant energy has been a part of who you are and your and your makeup as a woman. And but mm -hmm. being in a relationship with a man earlier on, you know, he kind of pushed back on that and said that you could be a bit more submissive and you started to do work. So I guess my question is, and I'll ask it again, is this a is this a stage personality? You know what I mean? Is this like an alter ego? Like who? Who is the submissive goddess? Because now I want to kind of like get into your content a little bit. Um, yeah, how my mom raised me, how she was and how I was looking at her. Uh, that's where I got my dominance from, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. The more of that masculine side. Yeah. And when I started getting older, I didn't like that. I didn't like how she was. And I found myself doing that to men. And they didn't like it. So it's like, I need to change because the men, the type of men that I want don't like that. Right. Yeah. Um, me saying I'm the submissive goddess. It is a part of me. I don't want to really say it's like a duality. Like we're separate. I feel like it's like a yin and yang almost. Okay. If that makes sense within me. So, yeah, I feel like kind of 
a little bit different, but if I wasn't submissive and I didn't go through all of that dominant stuff and didn't know, hey, I don't like that, then I wouldn't know how to be submissive if that makes sense. All right. So I'm going to have to ask you this question. Okay. Right? When, because when I hear you say uh, dominance, the way you speak on it, I feel like the way you interpret it, it has connotations of like controlling. Yes, right? very You're, much. So let's say you get into a relationship with a man mm-hmm. and y'all are, I guess, in the talking phase. And he's like, you know, I'm really feeling Juju's energy. I like her little son or daughter. You know, I could see this being a, you know, a ready-made family for my own right. son or daughter. We kind of come together like Voltron, right? Right. <laughs> but he has a, he has a, uh, is it a caveat? I don't know what the term is here. Not an ultimatum because I don't think mm-hmm. it's an ultimatum, but he has, he has a, a requirement. Okay. In order for him to go to that next level with you, he wants for you to stop the submissive goddess podcasting and he wants for you to uh. you know temper your uh expressions online because he wants that reserved for him. Is that something that Juju is open to receiving or is it like nah? Okay, so is he taking care of everything in the household? Do I have to work? Let's say that he is. Yeah, he's taking care of everything in the household. I don't have to want for anything. Um, so I'm not able to do the Submissive Goddess podcast, and he wants me to push my temperament down online. Uh, yeah, honestly, if we're married, yeah, I can understand that. Um, uh, yeah, anything so below cool. marriage, absolutely not. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> that, that year felt so hesitant. <laughs> it felt hesitant because I'm like, yo, why would a guy ever want that? But yeah. it's like, okay. But yeah, I can understand a lot of people have lost their marriages or argued because of social media. Like, just get off social media. It's social media. Who cares? The whole reason I'm on social media is to push my content. Yeah. And to get to know people and possibly meet somebody. So if I'm already met, ever met somebody, he's perfect. And only thing he's asking me to do is stop acting a little wild or saying wild stuff online and to let go of the submissive goddess podcast because it's a bit raunchy. Then I don't feel that's my husband asking me something directly. Like, yeah, why would I say no? That doesn't make sense to me. But yeah, I would. Okay, so, let, so let me ask you this. Mm-hmm. Like he's not he's not your husband yet, but he wants it to be a serious relationship. Like he wants <laughs> exclusivity. And like you said, the content can be a little, you know, raunchy you know what yeah. I mean? so like it so is it still no like yeah until we're married is the answer is no oh wow yeah um <laughs> yeah just the dating is not enough for me you know okay. i'm if i'm gonna change because listen i could delete that podcast delete my twitter or chill on the twitter and then we break up now what do yeah. i have yeah you know, like you have to prove to me that this is serious and it actually affects our relationship somehow. Got you. So, yeah. you, so you're saying you're, you're hedging your bets. Like you, 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 you need some insurance before. I do. I need some insurance because this is the thing, right? If you don't have that ring and that title, you don't really have anything. Yeah. Any that man can just walk up anytime. Your boyfriend, girlfriend, or life partners—he can leave anytime. Yeah. There's no type of security net there. At least if you get a divorce or separate, at least you're, you got the name, you have the assets. You know, you have this joint stuff. Yeah, the men boyfriends are not, and girlfriends just don't do it. <laughs> the, the 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 men are not going to like that. Like I'm you, sorry. <laughs> the, the i the idea that if you get a divorce and you get the assets and stuff like that, a lot I of said, men, hey, it could be mutual. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. some of these women are out here, and they have things too. Yeah. You know, I'm just saying, but hey, if I don't have some type of security net and the relationship, which would be the ring and the yeah. name. I'm not moving how you want me to move. I so, can we can come to some type of um, compromise. So basically, you're saying if you get drafted on the team, <laughs> you, you you are willing to be a role player. Right? Um, you're willing to yeah. play your role. Yes, I I have no problem with playing my role. Yeah, no problem at all. It's just that <laughs> I need some reassurance. That's it. Need some reassurance. 
Juju, I, I want I want to believe you. But I do. In, 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 the, in the in the back of my mind, my spidey senses are saying, you know, that the bratty energy that can I think that. Oh no, 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 no! But this is the bratty energy that I give men that I talk to multiple guys. You know what okay. I'm saying? So it's like you're not giving me what I want. I can just go to somebody else, you know, but with your marriage or a long-term relationship, you can't just say that to somebody. Like, okay. so you got to struggle through. So while, why, why you're presently dating and the dating market is, you know, you, you have a roster? Like, Ugh, I don't like that word roster. Cause a lot of people, uh, fit that with me having sex and okay. having like a rotation well, you you explained it to, you, <laughs> as you said you talked to multiple guys so i'm multiple saying people like, but i don't like to call it a roster or nothing like okay yeah no 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 no, no. <laughs> all right okay i've talked i've talked to multiple people um i think maybe like out of all the people i'm talking to maybe like two are actually catching my eye okay the rest are just kind of like texting yeah when i'm bored yeah damn don't be I happy. know <laughs> it sounds bad, but it's true. I like to be honest, you know. I yeah. Like to be honest. yeah, yeah. All right, all right. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I, I recall having you on the panel. This was yeah. the the, the pick me's versus skip me's panel, mm -hmm. and you you set the panel on fire when you introduced <laughs> uh, polygamy into the conversation. Mm. All right. So is 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 that is polygamy still on the table for the submissive goddess? Where are you in your polygamy evolution? Um, somebody almost fucked it up for the yeah. whole world, but yeah, I'm still down. I am. I feel like everybody has somebody for them, mm -hmm. but you might have <laughs> that soulmate of yours might have multiple soulmates too. So it's kind of like I don't mind the whole polygamy thing. Gotcha. Um my thing is I like to experience things, right? So I feel like I can't really speak too highly of it or whatever if I'm not, if I didn't experience it yet. So I would mm. really like to experience it. Gotcha, gotcha. Even if it doesn't work out, at least I can say, hey, I did that. Yeah. Well, what, what I will say is in a lot of conversations that I've had with most women, um, the concern tends to be that, there's like a lack of trust between the women, right? The it, like yeah. the women feel like this one really wants him for herself, but she's acting as if like she's okay with us all being here. But the mm -hmm. goal is to basically win him over, you know. For so are you, so the question I ask here, I gotta give you a hard question. Like, yeah. are you <laughs> are you sincere and being being open to uh to to sharing? I don't know if sharing is the, the proper term. I I think sharing is okay. Are yeah, you, yeah, are you yeah, open so to yeah. actually sharing or are you angling to like basically, you know, take the cake and run? No, because think about it like this, right? If this man is, men are benefiting as much as, it's like a 50-50. They do benefit, but it comes with a lot of responsibility. Yeah. So this man is benefiting off having multiple women, you mm -hmm. know? So it's no way, if he's really into polygamy, it's no way I'll be able to come in there and convince him. <laughs> Leave all your other women and just have me. Like, come on now. It doesn't make sense. And plus, yeah. I'm not bisexual at all. So yeah. you're not even going to be able to sleep with other women. Yeah. So that doesn't make sense. Yeah. Got I you. think it's more of an insecurity thing these women are having. Like, they're having some type of struggle. They just don't want to share. And they feel like maybe in the new woman is going to one-up them. Got I you. don't know. But Got I'm you. down to share. I actually share. And my main thing is, yeah, we're going to be sharing penis and assets and all this other stuff but you get a sisterhood like i actually get to know a woman from the inside out and she's gonna be my sister that's gonna be like my soulmate just platonic you know yeah, yeah. no i get that i get that yeah oh, that's okay. really what i'm in it for like, like, <laughs> and i just give you a quick round of applause mm -hmm. thank you that's really um, what i'm in it for i think it's it's not just about the ring it's about <sighs> the relationship that you're gonna get you know, and those, maybe you and that guy might not work out, but you and that girl are going to be diehard forever. Okay. You just don't know until you try. Okay. All right. What what, what do I have on the docket? <laughs> like, so this, this is just like right right off the top of the dome, but I, I have I have to give you these questions. Mm -hmm. uh, submissive goddess, submissive goddess, submissive goddess. All right, here we go. Your content 
right? Is 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 geared around your dating life, but mm-hmm. you are also the submissive goddess. So, like, if you know a true submissive goddess, right, is a uh, is a prize for any man who, to capture and to have. So, the question I have for you is. Uh, why is the submissive goddess still single? Like, why hasn't anyone kind of like closed the deal? Like, are there are there good guys on the market? Like, what's going on? Like, help help me understand what's happening here. Uh, I was in a relation. I was in a situation where we were about to close said deal. Yeah. But I just when I get lied to, I take it to heart. And when you betray me. It's like off with your head. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. even little things, I feel like if you'll lie about this little thing, you'll lie about this big thing. Yeah. So yeah, I thought I was, I thought I was, I was happy and everything and then it was good. But then, hey, things happen and people lie and consequences, you know? But like I said, there are some guys that are just out here to play the field. Yeah. And then there's some guys that don't want to date a woman with kids. That's fair. Right. Yeah. Then there are just some guys that want a long term relationship, but they want to make sure that they are vetting you so hard. I get the vetting, but it's like it's so much to the point where it's like they don't trust you. Yeah. So it, it's I'm I know it's good guys out here, but I just haven't found mine. Yeah. But in the meantime, in between time, the dating is fun. I'm getting to know people. So I'm not complaining too hard. OK. All right. <laughs> so if the. uh if the people want to know more about the submissive goddess, like what, what's in your wine glass right now? That's that, that should have been a that should have been a question. Uh, peach Moscato. A peach Moscato. All right, so fella, she likes Moscato. So. I like fruity, sparkling wine. I don't like reds. Okay. Yes. All right. So you know, take <laughs> take, take a mental note so you can shoot the best shot. Uh, submissive goddess vlog. When we first connected. You weren't on video yet. You were Mm-mm. not showing people no. who you were. Uh, for all we know, you could have been a bot with a nice voice. Right. You know? <laughs> exactly. You have now uh, made your presence known. You're on YouTube now. You want to tell people about your channel. and? Uh, oh, man. I'm just, you know what? Content. People were asking me to do the YouTube. They asked me to do Patreon. So I tried to do the Patreon thing, but I felt like people have been supporting me and stuff. And... I didn't ask for any money, so why am I going to ask now? So I just went ahead and did the YouTube instead. And I got my followers going. I think I'm at like 100 and something. So I'm yeah. happy about that. Yeah. And um, it's really just about random stuff. Me swiping on Twitter, on Tinder. Um, me talking about Twitter stuff. Just my outrage on things. Just little random stuff that I feel like, I'm going to record this. But they haven't been seeing my face lately. i just been getting over the little breakup that I had. So I've just been chilling on recording. So this is like my little debut back or something. I don't know. Is that is that the energy that I was feeling at the beginning of this? Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. You know, I'm just, you kind of feel like sometimes, dang, is it me? And then, of course, something is up with you if you keep attracting the same people. Yeah. So I have to try to, like, tweak myself. And it is... Uh, what I like to call shadow work and it is a bit of a hassle so I'm just kind of getting to know myself again and seeing what I can tweak to find my you know my soulmate so yeah. it's tough work and then of course daily life trying not to lose my followers so I have to stream and like my podcast I'm being transparent about everything so it's definitely a journey I can't lie <laughs> have you have you done an episode about the breakup yet? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I even want to give him that. I don't know. I don't know if I want to do that. I don't know if I want to give him that energy. I don't know if he would ever listen, but I might just something, but I don't know. I don't know. I'd rather talk about my wild events or something positive, you know? Yeah. I'm like, hold on. Oh, I'm, 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 I, it's like damn like I, I i i picked up on the energy like when we first started i was like what's are you okay and you know i love too hard yeah that's what it is yeah and i try to warn guys too because it's like hey are you sure you're in this because i'm in this are you you want to do this he's like yeah sure don't be silly okay and then i latch on and then when i get so when i'm 
I'm up on this this pedestal, this mountain, right? Just in bliss. So then it's a hard fall. It's a long, hard fall. Yeah. So luckily with that situation, it only it didn't last too too long. So I'm I'm fine. Right. And then of course the dating and talking to cute guys doesn't doesn't make you feel too too bad. But yeah. Yeah. So were you still dating while you were in, in this? Mm -mm. Yeah. No. I had completely cut everything off. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what probably tried to, that's what made it a little difficult too. Cause it's like, dang, I cut off all my other people for this. Didn't work. So, so how does that work in the data? <laughs> like if, if I, like, I don't know what it's like, like, do you just like send out like, Hey, big head texts? Like, hey, like, yeah, hey. kind of. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like you know, um, okay. Cause I really wanted that to work. Right. We were like a really good match. So this is the thing I was like, I'm deleting my tender. He was like, okay, uh, you don't have to. I said, no, I'm going to delete it. He said, okay. He said, I deleted mine. I said, did you like actually delete your account or just the app? He said, just the app. And a red flag kind of was like, mm. I was like, okay, don't read too much into that. And then I started getting kind of attached. The next thing I know, I'm back on the dating market. And I'm like, dang. So I got back on Tinder and it was even hard to swipe. I'm like, I don't want to do this. It took me a while to start swiping. And then after that, uh, random, my guys in the past will hit me up and I'm like, oh, what's up? You know, then I would tell them what happened. They're like, you want to go on a trip? Are you good? Can I send you anything? So I'm like, it's not too bad. They're not jerks. They, they care about me, but it's like, they're just yeah. not the one, you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, how, uh, listen, <laughs> there was a, there was a, all right, I'm not going to go down that path. I mean, listen. I don't. I don't want. I don't want to put that energy. You know, you're going to get me like once every year or something. Yeah, listen, that's cool. <laughs> this is this is the one for 2022. So mm -hmm. I, I, I want to. You know, I want to hold the sanctity of of, <laughs> <laughs> of certain things. But um, what was I going to say? Uh, because I'm 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 thinking about a few things here. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I lost my my train of thought because there were two competing questions. All right. So, OK, let me ask you this. And guys, please forgive me for, for the question. But we talk about uh, polygyny, right? Polygyny is the when when uh, someone is dating more than one person. But polygamy in particular, that's the form of when a man is dating more than one woman right is i that, believe so i get with the right. uh, poly. Nope. yeah <laughs> all right so there was a clip on uh instagram the other mm -hmm. day um i think this guy shaka bars you familiar with him i yeah yeah he shared it on his page and it was a lady and walmart and she posted a tiktok like this is what it looks like to have three husbands <sighs> and like all and he like she put the camera like on each of the guys and like they were all like smiling and waving. And I'm like, well, it couldn't be me, but were they, they were all black Oh, and, my and, gosh. She, and she was black. And I, you know, I was thinking to myself, you know, if, you know, if it's good for them, cool. But I mean, I would never oh, be in no. a situation, but you know, I'm, I'm asking, are, are there, are there three husbands out there for Juju? <laughs> no. <laughs> No. No thanks. Uh, okay. No. All right. All right. I just kind of feel like, yo, the I'm not saying the penis isn't sacred. It is. Yeah. But I feel like the yoni collects energy and it's yeah. like a gateway. And I honestly couldn't tell you if I'm having sex with three men, if I get pregnant, who all everybody's the father. I, I just can't do that. And then I just kind of feel like, um, it's emasculating. Yeah. Why do I just I, need? Why do I need more than one? I just need I one. I didn't want to say that part. Yeah, I, I just need one. Yeah. I'm fine with one. I know these other women are probably booing me, throwing tomatoes. Okay, but I, yeah. ladies, you only need one. You fine with one? It's not. It's it's fine. That one man that can kill a spider and do all that stuff, totally fine. I don't need all the extras. All right. And plus, think about oh, that's a lot of energy to be given out to please men. That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I I, I could not. Um, I can't do that. <laughs> Sorry. So what? Let me ask you this: the 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 breakup. You said that you there was like some lies that kind of like popped off in the situation. Lies. Um, I don't know. Lies. 
he was just playing the good guy. Mm. Yeah. Um, I'm not used to the good guy. Sorry, I'm charge this. I'm not used to the good guy. So I did think it was like fake at first. And I was giving him like the grade A vetting. And he was just like, I'm not like that. I'm not that guy. And I'm like, dang, okay, this guy's a good guy. He got me. He got me good. Yeah. It's just, you know, like I said, once my feelings are out there, man, it's it's almost impossible to reel them back in. I'm not going to lie. So, yeah, he 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 read me really good and pounced on me. like. Yeah. Mm. Pun intended? Yes. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> All right. All right. At least uh, that part was great. You know, okay. that was, he was a good, you know. <laughs> all right so let me i'm gonna ask you this last question because i mm-hmm. want to you know i can't have you here and not do some healing work with you yes you you, you kind of admit it to the fact you love hard you latch on early yeah. do, do you see that as as an issue um yes i feel like i might give out a little too much too soon if that's and maybe it might be a scary thing to a guy you know it's not like a psycho thing but it's just like hey like i want this to work and i'm open with my feelings and i think i might drown them a little bit in the beginning yeah and if you don't have like a strong presence and if you don't love hard too it's gonna it's gonna drown you yeah honestly <laughs> So let me let me ask you this question. I, I've mm-hmm. I've heard it said that as as women get older, right? You know, we have the the biological clock is like a thing. When they're dating, <laughs> it it becomes a bit more serious, right? They're not here to play the game, so they have a criteria where they cross dudes off like really quick, especially if they're serious about finding that one that's going to seal the deal. Like, mm-hmm. do, you, do you feel like that's where you see yourself? going or are you still a little bit like lazy fair or you know let it like i was talking about this in a podcast today um i definitely don't feel that clock i don't have that heat on my neck like you have to find a man quick 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 i mean i look good i'm 31 i've had all the kids that i'm gonna have you know if it's meant for me to have another one then i will that's why i'm kind of like very chill on it like i want a man but i'm gonna go out enjoy travel and if i run into that man then so be it i full heartedly believe the ancestors know exactly what they're doing the universe knows what they're doing why who am i to rush it so if this didn't work out it didn't work out but for me to feel and i have my children like i said so my clock ain't ticking (laughs) i'm gonna still look good at 40 yeah. 41 you know yeah i would like to get married before 40 of course everybody has their um their wants but the universe looks at our wants and our ideas and our plans and laughs a lot mm-hmm. so well give, I'm, just, I'm just going with the flow I, I have i have a lot of uh lady listeners here on the platform as well i actually have a good mix now like when i first started i was like 15 percent women and 85% mm. men but now and i'm like i think i'm like uh 30% women and 70% men at this point on the platform so yeah that sounds like mine <laughs> can, can you give my lady listeners uh just some advice if they're <laughs> dating any any advice you want to give them about the dating field because you are i don't want to call you a pro but like this i'm not you know <laughs> You, your content is around it's around dating and your experiences. So yeah. that, and then I guess you can close by just telling people where they can find you and anything you would like them to know. Uh, take your time. Heal first. And then once you are in the midst of healing and you feel like you're proper for dating, um, I would say open up and just be transparent with people. Like I like to be so blunt that it's almost like you're lying. Like, no, I like to be openly blunt and just tell somebody, hey, this is what I think. This is what I want. If you don't want that, that's fine. You can always find friends on your journey. It doesn't always have to be just slicing people's heads off and just saying, oh, they're not for me. Like some people are really good friends or, you know, just people to have around. But take your time. Um, Society wants to put like this clock on us. Um, Even people's religions and stuff, cultures want to put time on us and this clock and you're going to stress yourself out and possibly get married to somebody that you shouldn't 
or be with somebody just off the strength of I have a man. I wouldn't recommend. <laughs> it's no. going to cause a lot more trauma and you're going to need a lot more healing after that. So I would definitely just say take your time. Uh, vent to somebody. Journal. Um, do some type of affirmations for yourself. Manifest the person that you want to be and the person that you're supposed to be with is just going to fall in your lap. 100%. That's what I think. <laughs> That's great advice. All right, so you want to tell the people where they can find you just to stay tapped in with everything you have going on. Yes. Um, okay, so I have two Twitters, uh, Jew underscore A-J-E underscore Jew. And then I have my main one, which is Juju's underscore locks. And I do have a new Instagram. Can I remember that? It is... I have it up right Jew, here. Yeah, Jew underscore... Uh, yeah, Jew underscore locked underscore, underscore. <laughs> yes um and of course you can always go to my podcast submissive goddess podcast or on youtube submissive goddess blog and i'm trying to get my followers up on the youtube thing i do take suggestions on what they want to see what they want me to go and view and i'm pretty if open some, yeah. if someone wants to send you suggestions for a topic how do how do they do that um, you can hit me up on my Jew Aja uh, Jew uh, Twitter page because those DMs are open, or in the comment section on any um, YouTube video because I definitely see those. I'll look at those all the time. All right, all right. Well, <laughs> thank you so much for coming on the show today. Like, no problem. Talk your shit, Professor Mawale. Listen, if you are here for the first time, make sure you go ahead and hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. Yo, check this out. Run my uncle Mawale his likes. All right, this has been another episode of Going Off Topic, and we're about to tap out. Talk to y'all next time. Peace. Bye. <laughs> going off topic off topic you really off topic right yo you way off topic how is it that everybody's over here and you way over there off topic